Let's take a normal clip like this and make a video matte painting using Photoshop's Generative Fill tool and Adobe After Effects. Adobe Photoshop's new Generative Fill tool opens the door for tons of possibilities when it comes to content. Although right now it's in beta, it still has kinks to work out, but there's so much potential for this, not only with stills, but with video too. So I'm gonna show you how to take a standard stock clip and change the elements in the shot to create an apocalyptic matte painting. So let's dive into it. All right, so I have my clip here of a person in the distance riding their bike. As you can see, there's some slight camera movements in this clip. So using this technique on footage with a lot of movement is difficult. So you'll wanna use a shot that's either locked down with a tripod or with minimal camera movement to really sell the effect. From here, I'll go to Composition, Save Frame As, Photoshop Layers. Now I'll find that PSD file and I'll open it up in Photoshop, the beta version. And I'll start working on my image by selecting the Object Selection tool. I'll select my street and I'll go down and click Generative Fill. And I'll type in a prompt like Broken Pavement. I'll click Generate. And once it renders out, it'll give you a few options to choose from. And sometimes they're terrible and other times they're quite flawless. And you could also try different wording to get different results. So I'm gonna use this one. I'm gonna clean up the area at the end of this alley by making sure my generative layer mask is selected and I'll select an area. I'll also create a feather on this mask by going to select, modify, feather. I'll give it a 20 pixel feather and I'll hit delete. Now I'll select my lasso tool and I'll work on the building on camera right. So I'll select this whole building and I'll go back to the contextual taskbar and I'll hit generative fill. And I'll type in abandoned building. Again, it gives me a few options. I like the first one the best, so I'll choose that one. Now I'll do the same thing with part of my building on camera left. But this time I'll type in overgrown plants, grass, and ivy. I'll see what comes back with. Okay, so there are some good ones here. The first one looks a little more wild and unkept, so I'm trying to go with that. Now sticking with that overgrown vibe, I'll select the middle of my pavement here and I'll hit generative fill and type weeds growing. So now it's interesting here it comes back with a warning. The generative images were removed because they violate user guidelines. Now this is most likely because I used the word weed and I'm assuming Adobe has some tight guidelines in place, especially in this beta version. So I'll have to reword this. Large plant growth and came back with sort of a tree root in the ground. Not quite what I'm looking for, but I'll use this one. This is kind of what I wanted. So now I'll use the elliptical mask and I'll select part of the foreground here and I'll type in pile of garbage. And I'll select one of these. Now I'll select the top three quarters of the buildings all the way in the background and I'll type in abandoned buildings. Nice. I'll go with the second one here. Now I'll select part of the building's camera left in the back and I'll get some more overgrown vines here. select one of these. Now I'll select this part on camera right and I'll get some more overgrown vines here. And yeah, not quite what I'm looking for. So I'll go up to the properties panel and I'll update this to overgrown plants. All right, that one looks good. So now I'll add a few more elements. I'll select a large portion on camera left and I'll type in large worn old tank. And I'll select this one. It's actually more than one, but I kind of like it. Now I'll select part of the tank and I'll type in graffiti on tank. See what that does. It changed the structure a bit, but I'll select this one. This is sort of what I was going for. All right, so now what I'll do is I'll hide my background layer and I'll save this as a PSD and I'll open the PSD in After Effects. 
and overlay it over my original video clip. All right, so now it's coming together, but I'll need to match that subtle camera movement of the original clip. There are a few ways to do that, but for this one, I'll just do a track motion. So I'll adjust the track point to a high contrast spot. And I'll track forward. And I'll actually create a null object layer to apply it to. So I'll select Edit Target and select my null and hit Apply. So now I'll parent my PSD to the null object by pick whipping it so it should match my motion nicely. All right, so now let's take it one step further. I'll add some ambient fog or smoke, which is just a stock clip, and I'll make it a screen blending mode. And lastly, I'll add an adjustment layer and color correct the scene using the Lumetri color effect. Under the creative dropdown, I'll select the preset SL matrix green, and I'll lower the intensity a bit. And there it is, it's a completely different shot. So there you have it guys, using Adobe Photoshop's generative fill along with Adobe After Effects, you can have virtually no budget with your productions and come up with something like this to make your content stand out. Thanks for watching, see you next time.